Welcome back to Southwest Yard and Garden. I'm John White. With me today is Dr. Carol Sutherland, and Carol's mm -hmm. extension entomologist here at New Mexico State. And Carol, uh, we have a lot of pecans here in the southern part of the state, and as we're moving into late May, this is a critical time to start looking for our infamous pecan nut case bearer. You want to tell us a little bit about it? Okay. Pecan nut case bearer is relatively new here to the Mesilla Valley, to the southern part of the state uh, here. It's been here since uh, the early 80s. And uh, where it uh, does occur, it will come in ovipositing uh, for that first generation about the latter part of May. Our first estimate with the uh, current temperature patterns that we've been having here in the valley indicate that uh, peak activity for emergence of the moths, peak activity for mating, flight, and ovipositing should be somewhere around the latter part of May with uh, peak nut entry being about May 27th. That would be the ideal time for anyone who's going to be uh, treating for these pests to make their applications. Now this is a date for the Las Cruces area. You're right. This is uh, based on temperatures here in the Las Cruces area. So if it you're in be... a pecan growing area, you might want to right. check with your local Check with your local uh, extension, extension agent. Service. Right, yeah, for some recommendations uh, depending on what the temperatures have been in your area. And there is a, um, uh, a site on the weather climate page right. uh, uh -huh. where you can calculate your own heat units mm -hmm. and kind of right. get a determination there. Yes. But that, uh -huh. that date of uh, May 27th is for the Doniana yeah. County area. Uh -huh. Right. And that may change depending on what kind of weather systems that we have come in. Now where people should be looking for this ovipositing activity is in the area of the developing clusters. Now here in uh, the time that we're shooting this particular uh, segment, this is a little bit early, so you'll have to imagine that we have a developing cluster here where these flowers are. But the developing cluster will be, uh, the nutlets will be quite small, about the size of a little pork and bean. Growers will want to look for small white eggs, probably individually placed, one on maybe one end of the nut, maybe another one on the uh, top end of the nut. That's usually where they're located. There might be only one or two per cluster, or there these might are, be. These are smaller than a pinhead. These are smaller very, very than small. a pinhead, right. So uh, if they want to take their magnifying lens out, by all means, go out and examine uh, many clusters of nuts, as many as you can see around your tree, under your tree. Uh, wouldn't hurt if you could examine 50 to 100 clusters if you have a number of trees in each quadrant. That will give you a clue as to the ovipositing activity that's occurring. Now the little creatures that are doing this are actually moths. The moths are very small, about uh, when they have their wings spread, they're not even as large as a nickel. They're kind of grayish brown, they fly at night, and so they would be rarely observed by the grower unless he happens to be using some traps, some pheromone traps for these insects. So. Um, that's where now, they're coming from. Okay, now talk a little bit about pheromone trap. What is it and, okay. and uh, how, how would you use it in this All monitoring? Right. Well, we know that many insects uh, communicate with scents and the pecan nut case bearer is no exception to this. The uh, female moth will produce a scent that the uh, males are attracted to and actually they use that to home in on potential mates. So this has been uh, manufactured commercially artificially and it is available for growers to use. They'll uh, use a trap that's either shaped like an old-fashioned pup tent or one that uh, they call a wing trap. Uh, it looks kind of like two sheets of paper kind of held apart by some spacers, placing those out in the orchard. They'll want to check those traps very frequently, perhaps daily if they can, so they can get some uh, experience with the moths coming in, identify those correctly as a pecan nut case bear and start writing down your results because as those uh, numbers of pecan nut case bears begin to peak, you know that egg laying is going to be right behind it. That's going to be an activity right behind it and then the, the treatments, if you're going to be doing that sort of thing, will be scheduled right after that occurs. So you're trying to hit the uh spray treatment at the time of egg lay? Yeah, at the time of egg lay, you could probably, with some of the materials that are uh, labeled for pecan nut case bear, you do get control of adults. Uh, for other materials such as uh, Bacillus thuringiensis, which will be popular with homeowners. Or BT. That, right, yeah, that does not kill the adults, but it will kill the very small larvae if you contact them. So, 
Okay. Um, what, what other insecticides do we have as, as far as control measures? There are different options for homeowners versus that of the uh, commercial people. The uh, homeowners would have access to the, the standard materials, malathion, diazinon, uh, carbaryl or 7, and the BTs. And then the uh, commercial uh, growers will probably want to look at something like uh, Confirm. Uh, they'll probably want to look at maybe some of the permethrins and whatnot. There are some downsides to the permethrins in that they may knock off some of the beneficials that are out here in our pecan orchards even this early in the spring and may cause some upsets with uh, things like spider mites or aphids. Okay. Uh, now, we, how many generations a year do we have? We probably have uh, two and a half to three generations of these creatures every year. They overwinter in little things called hibernacula on the rough spots in the bark or around the buds and uh, the larvae will come out, um, perhaps boring into twigs if young nuts are not available. The first uh, generation would be the most damaging to the nut crop in that they can destroy many, many nuts in a cluster, if not all the nuts in a cluster. As the nuts get larger, the number of, uh, uh, the, uh, number of nuts that the larvae may feed in will probably decrease and the pests become less destructive as the nuts get larger still okay. late in the summer. Okay. Well, Carol, thank you very much for giving us the information on pecan nut case bear, and thank you for being on Southwest Yard and Garden. Okay, thanks a lot.